All right, so today I'm taking out my Triumph. I'm going to be riding it to one of the shops I work at it because I want to make a set of highway pigs for it. Initially, I recorded this as a moto vlog, but I'm still trying to figure out the best way to record voice in helmet. But I like the footage, and I'm recording the exhaust sounds with the zoom recorder, and I like how that turned out. So I hope you enjoy the exhaust sounds and the voiceover anyway. This bike is a Thruxton 900 that's been basically converted back into a Bonneville. It's got Bonneville handlebars and a 19 inch steel front wheel, but it still has rear sets. It's my first motorcycle and it's been through a number of iterations and had a few different looks to it since I got it. In its current state, it has kind of a Japanese vibe to it. With the mid-rise bars and the bench seat and the shortened fenders, it already had kind of a brat style look to it. And then recently I got this Asahi windshield, which is a Japanese windshield. A lot of times you see these on Sportsters, but I thought it would be a cool look for this bike as well. If you're wondering, this is the Tech Bike Parts 2 into 2 Clubman exhaust with the baffles removed. It's one of the cheapest exhausts you can get for these bikes. I think it was 400 bucks when I got it. And that's for a complete stainless exhaust system, headers with bungs for the O2 sensors, silencers, and baffles. Also, if you're wondering, I did have another mirror on the left side. Someone clipped it in a parking lot. The bike didn't fall over or anything. They just literally clipped only the mirror. They're kind of expensive mirrors, so I didn't feel like replacing it yet. So Triumphs have a thing here called the breastplate. I'm going to weld the highway pegs directly onto it. I don't want it to look like an aftermarket accessory like the ones that clamp onto the frame itself. I want it to look kind of seamless with the bike. So then I sanded the paint off. And then I cut a piece of square tube and weld the piece of square tube directly onto the breastplate. Basically then I cut off one wall of the square tube so that a piece of round tube can notch into it. And then that round tube accepts these round bar elbows which I plug weld in place.
And then I give it a clear coat paint job because I like the look of the natural steel. If the exhaust melts it and it starts to rust, I'll just get it powder coated. So like I said, this is my first bike, and I got a Thruxton because when I first learned to ride, I thought I would want a Cafe Racer, but I learned that Cafe Racer ergonomics suck, at least for the way that I want to use a motorcycle, which is longer trips and traveling. I do appreciate having rear sets in the corners. For me, being a taller guy, the mid-rise handlebars aren't weird at all, like ergonomically that combination isn't a mashup, it actually kind of works well for my body. But my neck still does get tired after a few hours, hence the desire for highway pegs. I guess these aren't really pegs in the end, they're like little footrests. You might also wonder why I put a 19 inch steel front on a Thruxton. It's a larger, heavier wheel than the stock 18 inch alloy wheel, and as a result, cornering is a lot slower. But it tracks really straight in an effortless and stable way at high speed, and it's really lovely on the highway. So when I got this bike, it was just a stock Thruxton, but it had a horrible exhaust. It was mild steel tube, poorly welded together, and wrapped in that fiberglass wrap. I don't know why people like that stuff, it traps moisture in. It also had a seat I didn't like. It was like the stock cow seat without the cow, but it wasn't. It was a worse version that was not comfortable, and it ran poorly. It was really rich, and I think it actually got like 10 miles per gallon. Tuning the ECU back to factory tuned helped with that, but it still didn't run right because of the exhaust. Then switching to the tech bike parts exhaust fixed that. It's run normal ever since. And I picked that exhaust honestly because it was the cheapest full stainless exhaust available, but it's been a big upgrade. And I think that was the second upgrade I did after changing the seat. And I got the slammer seat from British Customs when they were having a sale of some kind. I got the slammer seat, I also got a Lucas style taillight from British Customs because it previously had an LED taillight that kind of wrapped around the seat cowl, tail tidy, homemade situation and it didn't look very good. It wasn't going to work with the bench seat anyway. The Lucas taillight is appropriate for a bike that's supposed to look like it's from the 60s so I went with that. So I rode the bike around like that for a while and then I made a bunch of changes in rapid succession. I decided that I wanted an actual rear mudguard instead of the remnants of the tail tidy under the seat. So I got the aluminum rear mudguard from Back Motorcycles from France. And I also got their front mudguard to match. The rear mudguard came with a round tail light, 
which was a lot higher quality and much brighter than the Lucas Type 1, so I went with that even though arguably I like the Lucas shape better. The nice thing about having a bike that's at least a generation old is that people just kind of give you their used stuff once they upgrade to the current gen models, and the used parts get really cheap. Like this is a 2013, so it's right in the sweet spot of not being a classic. Nobody's hunting for these parts, and it's also not a current gen product from Triumph, so people upgrade to the current gen thing, and then parts for these one generation old bikes that people have just sitting around become kind of worthless. So for instance, someone here in the Triumph group locally gave me his old steering damper that he had taken off his bike before selling it, someone gave me the Bonneville handlebars, and someone else gave me a new set of shocks. I found the 19 inch wheel on eBay for like 90 bucks, and I found this cream colored tank, which is actually a beautiful custom painted tank, uh, locally for basically nothing. I also switched the dash bracket thing that holds the gauge pods, uh, that's from Motone, it's the lay flat dash, and I also got a low profile headlight bucket. It's another 7 inch bucket, I think it's a stock diameter, but it's just much more shallow and less bulky looking. There were some electrical components that would not fit in the headlight bucket because it's shallower, so they're just kind of wrapped in electrical tape. And I got the Asahi windshield kind of whimsically recently, but once I installed it I realized it's perfect for concealing all that stuff. So I'll tell you why I think the air-cooled 5-speed Triumphs are perfect bikes to learn to ride with. They're just the right amount of power, first of all. They're very reliable, and they're very cheap. At least they should be cheap. People might list them for unreasonable prices and act like theirs is special because they modified it or customized it in some way, but modifications and customizations don't contribute to value in most cases. These bikes are everywhere. They've been replaced by more powerful liquid cool models. You can mix and match parts from Thruxton, Scramblers, and Bonnevilles to make your own custom thing, and the parts are cheap and abundant, aftermarket or otherwise. And you have your pick of an earlier carbureted example or a later EFI example, like I have, depending on what's more convenient for you and whether or not you want to tune your bike via carb jetting or ECU stuff. You might hear that 900 cc's is too much to learn on, and that was not my experience. These are 900 cc's of air-cooled, outdated displacement, and this motor likes to be lugged around. It's not a liquid-cooled sport bike. You might be concerned about the weight as a new rider, and that's more valid as a concern. I have seen people, men and women of all shapes and sizes, on these, so if you're considering getting one of these bikes as a first bike, and you think you can handle it, and you've been dissuaded from doing so because of its weight, would not listen to that person telling you that you can't handle this bike, but also if you think over 450 pounds is too heavy for you to learn on, then that's also totally valid. It is comparatively heavy given other options. The way that I learned to ride is actually kind of weird. I got hit by a car when I was on a bird scooter, which is that little dumb scooter that you rent with an app. I got pretty injured and I had some mental trauma, I suppose, related to it because I got super afraid of cars and traffic of any kind, particularly when walking around outside, which I did a lot of. I was just terrified of being hit by a car randomly and I was like losing sleep because of it and it occurred to me one day that maybe if I expose myself to the maximum amount of exposure to cars and traffic, as in get on an even more dangerous vehicle like a motorcycle and be around them in a more physically vulnerable position, going way faster, it would make walking around cars and traffic seem easy again. And it worked. I took motorcycle lessons, then I bought the Triumph, then I started riding it around, and then I got obsessed with riding motorcycles. Now I've got five of them, and half the people I know are people I know through motorcycle stuff. Actually, my wife said the reason she started talking to me was because she saw a picture of me on this bike and thought I looked cool.
So I picked this bike because it was cheap and I didn't think I'd use it much. I thought after a while I'd be overriding and I'd sell it and I didn't want to put much money into a bike. I bought this bike for $2,300 and I probably put about that much into its upgrades and maintenance. And it hasn't actually needed anything mechanical other than routine maintenance. The frame has nearly 30,000 miles on it. I think I've done about 17,000 of those and the motor has more actually. The first owner somehow destroyed the original transmission. Don't get the impression that that's a normal thing to happen to these bikes because it's certainly anomalous. So the second owner who I bought it from bought it as a project and he sourced the engine and had it installed. I wasn't told how many miles were on the bike that the engine came from, just that it was more than the odometer indicated. More miles on the motor than on the frame. But these bikes are known to do a lot of miles just with routine maintenance. I've done several oil changes, I've checked the valves, but they were in spec. I replaced a rear tire, both sets of brake pads. I replaced the fuel filter while I was swapping the tank, and I replaced the chain. Everything else was cosmetic. Anyway, let me know if you want more content like this. It's pretty easy to make. Maybe I'll do some with just exhaust sound and no talking. And I'll try to find a way to get good in-helmet voice audio and make a moto vlog too. And I think I'll also do videos like these for my other bikes. I'll do one for the R9T I rode in the moto camping video and I'll do one for my other BMW. My Honda isn't running right now and the other Honda is my wife's, but stay tuned for those bikes too.